Hey guys, Nathan here. Now I have this problem. I have an orange, but I really don't want to peel it. Actually, just one second. Ha <laughs> ha, you gotta love magic. But the thing is, it's not magic at all. Just a little bit of editing. Check it out. Classic morph effect. You see it all the times in movies and TV shows, and well, you can do it really darn easy in DaVinci Resolve using optical flow. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. But before we get into that, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this because I put out two Resolve tutorials every week, and we are almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is just mind blowing. Anyway, let's get into it. We're gonna start off by setting up our camera and designing a set that ideally won't change. So it's a light controlled environment. Now I used a cloth and kind of made like an infinity wall thing, but a table in a dark room would do a great job. And then I made a little X out of tape and placed it on the cloth exactly in the center of the frame, just so I know exactly where to place each object when I do the switch. I then place the orange and wait about five seconds or so, and then take it out of there and put the apple exactly in its place. Let that run for another five seconds and then pick the apple up again. So once we have our shots, we're gonna bring them into Resolve. So I'm just gonna drag this down here. Boom. So here's a shot of our orange and of our apple. I'm going to delete the audio by holding an Alt, dragging over it and pressing Backspace. Now, first things first, if you remember in the shot at the beginning, I place the orange in the exact location. And the way I find it's easiest to do this is you just leave it there and then pick it up and then reverse the shot. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go to about here. Great. To reverse the shot, we're gonna right click, go into change clip speed, and then click on reverse speed. And now you see, we're gonna cut this first little bit where the camera's shaking when I press record. Okay, great, so we have me dropping the orange perfectly into position, and if we just play that through, the apple is right there, and we can go between the frames, and like, nothing changes, except if you do notice, if you look closely at the cloth, because I use cloth, things can change so quickly, so I do recommend a hard surface, but we're gonna work around that. So now what we wanna do is just grab the part right before we pick up our apple, so yeah, we'll just go give it a few seconds and then I'm just gonna hit control shift and bracket to bring it over there and boom. So now we have the apple changing instantaneously, but we wanna do a morph. So how do you go about morphing an object? Well, we want it to dissolve from one image to the other image. So let's try a cross dissolve on there and see what that does. So we're gonna go through and we can play it. Hey. Okay, so that isn't achieving what we want. And if we go to the middle here, we can see that this is not what we want. So let's hit Control Z to go back. So in order to morph, what we want the computer to do is we want it to analyze the frames and make new frames for in between based on that information. Now, if you've seen my slow-mo tutorials, you may know where I'm getting at with this. That sounds a lot like the optical flow feature. Now, thankfully, DaVinci has this in the free version of Resolve in a feature called Smooth Cut. So let's drag that on, and right off the bat, that's already looking much better. So now we're gonna hit play, and boom, we get that awesome morph effect. Now I find it works great in this particular shot when we bring it down to like eight frames. It's nice and quick, but if you want, we could maybe extend it so it takes a too, super long amount of time to morph. It's really whatever works for your particular situation. And it's really that easy and kind of makes you think, huh, if I could do it with fruit, I wonder how easily I could do it with a human face. Get subscribed to see that video in the future. But let's not end it there. So if we click on the smooth cut transition, we can see in our inspector, we have some options to go through. 
Now you can see the video transition style is smooth cut, which is exactly what we want. And you can alter the duration of it right here, or you can just go down to the actual timeline and alter your duration or your number of frames. So like I said earlier, we'll go with eight frames and you can also have an impact on your motion estimation type. So faster does just what it sounds like. It is faster. So let's just see that in motion. So this is faster and this is better. I'll toss a side by side on screen. I can't see much of a difference, but that's only for this particular shot. And then if you don't want it to blend in a linear fashion, you do have ease options. So let's say if we have it kind of ease in, boop, or maybe we can have it ease out. There's lots of different ways that you can go about doing it. And just for kicks, so you get the full idea how I did this effect, we're gonna go over the color grading. So to color grade these two clips, I want it to look identical. So now I could color grade each clip individually, I could put them into groups, I could maybe select them, right click, and then turn them into a compound clip. But the easiest way I think to do the grading on this is to go into effects, grab adjustment clip, and we just drag that over top. And the reason why I wanna do this is when I add my grade to my adjustment clip, I can easily move it to any other shots like this and my grade will be on top of it. So we're now gonna go into our color page. Okay, so there's a ton of different ways to do this, but this is what I decided for this particular shot. So gonna go into my contrast, just bump that up a whole heck of a lot. And just gonna bring my pivot down a little bit. As you can see, I'm a waveform. I just want the dark parts darker and help with some of these highlights. I'm also gonna soft clip the high end just a scooch and soft clip the low just to give it that nice kind of milky look. Now gonna go into my shadows just to really crush things or get things closer to crushed. Maybe I'll bring my lift down a scooch, my gamma up a scooch, and then my gain down. Okay, great, that's bringing me closer to where I want. We can bump the saturation up a little bit. Ooh, that's a little much. Let's go with like 60, cool. And if we wanna test our white balance, we can look at my skin tone and let's just see how we're getting along. So I'm gonna hit Alt S to add a new node, create a little window here, maybe around my skin, just to see how we're doing with the white balance. And I'm gonna hit highlight, go into my vector scope, and we're not quite on the skin line. So that's good to know. So let's just do a quick tint adjustment. We're gonna make it a little more purple, boom. There we go, skin is bang on now. And now if we play through our shot, we do have that change, but I'm noticing some differences in the surroundings. So what I wanna do is I wanna hit Alt S my keyboard again, and I'm gonna grab a power window. Let's grab one of these bad boys, get out of highlight and I'm going to invert that. Now I wanna make it super duper soft. So let's just bring this out and really soften out the edges. Now, what we wanna do is we want to darken basically everything that's not the apple. There's a bunch of different ways you could do this. You could do it in your offset. You could, actually that looks pretty good. You could do it in your gain just to bring down your more bright things, which I do like in this situation. But in this particular situation, I'm gonna do it with my curves. So I'm just gonna bring everything down. Yeah. There, I think that's pretty good. And then I'm just gonna make some adjustments to this power window. I just want it to barely kiss the bottom so it's like it's sitting in darkness. So now how does that look all the way through? Let's play it through. Wow. Yeah, I'd say that works pretty darn good. And just for kicks at the end here, I'm just going to right click, go into color space, lab CIE, go into my sharpness, unclick this and bring down my sharpness a little bit. And if you're wondering what the heck I just did, check out my tutorial on sharpening and boom, that is the final shot. So check it out. And it's just that easy. So that's how you do a morph using the smooth cut feature in DaVinci Resolve. So hopefully you can use that in your own projects. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.